Welcome back. We're definitely getting our ska cred. A higher quotient tonight here on Mountain Views, and what a pleasure it is. I'm here with Ashley Longo and Bombshell Academy. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having yeah, us. Absolutely. Yeah, Would great. you introduce the fellas? Oh my God. Our wonderful bass player, Chris, right here. We got Brian on lead guitar, and then we got our awesome drummer over there, Tyler. <laughs> so he's keeping us going in the back. He's the so. loud one over here. No doubt, you know, it's so funny that you say that because I was mixing. And then I was still running around on the first song because we had interview guests and everything. So I'm thinking all about that. And I just came out and was just listening to the last song, enjoying it. And I was like, dude, man, those are some loud drums. Yeah. <laughs> he always gets in trouble for being too loud. Yeah. yeah, it's always a problem when rehearsal comes around and you're trying to yeah. quiet it down. Yeah. So talk about the formation of the band. And I understand that you guys are kind of from all over the place. So how did you make it such a cohesive unit? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're all from Utah. We're all from Salt Lake. I guess I was actually born in Arizona, but I've been here most of the time. Um, and I don't know, I've been trying out for a couple things. I've been in a couple different bands here in Salt Lake and was really having a hard time just kind of finding yeah. what I was looking for, the right people or people who weren't, you know, people who actually were, you know, wanting to play music. And sure. so I got an idea from a good friend of mine who just said, you know, why don't you start your own band? And I was like, well, me? You know, and right. thought about it for a little bit and was just kind of like, well, why not? And so kind of did some digging and talked to some people and, you know, started connecting with these guys. And me and Brian found each other first. And I then found her on Craigslist. It turned out she wasn't a perverted old guy trying to scam me. So <laughs> right. we hooked up and it worked out good. Just kind of weird for like, like, I don't know, we don't really like dig the whole internet thing. But I don't know, it just kind of worked. It was really easy to like kind of stalk people and figure out like who would really work and like look at you know a unit and go okay who's this, you know who's gonna work and then we thought we were trying out a bass player and Tyler showed up <laughs> with drums and we were like okay and ended up <laughs> wow, with a really a awesome drummer I like the awesome symbols accident. on your bass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> worked out so then we found, found Chris and he completed the unit and it seems like I mean it's been a really like Gosh, we're going on like probably six to eight months now of just like maybe. really fast, yeah. maybe. So everything's been happening really fast and we've busted out a lot of songs all of a sudden and like recording and been getting like some bigger gigs. And so it's just, I don't know, it seems like it's working the way it's supposed to. Nothing stressful. No question. I'd have to say that it's, it's great to hear this story because I know I've been a musician for a long time and I know how hard it is and how frustrating it is and that feeling of right getting scammed by some weirdo on Craig I mean that's pretty much the story of Craigslist is it not but to be able to get a unit together and obviously I can tell you guys have a vibe that's just it's chill in terms of you guys clearly get along and 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 get it and are seemingly really pointed in the same direction musically which is pretty awesome. Well, and I think the coolest part is that everybody's different. We're all very different. And I think the thing that makes it work is everybody's willing to flex a little bit, sure. flex a lot. And so you take a lot of flexing and you put it together and you get this like really unique, weird thing that seems to work. And as long as everybody's willing to like try something, then it doesn't really seem like we have a problem. Our biggest problem is like who drank all the vitamin water or. Yeah. Wow. Those are, those are good problems to have. Now, have you guys played in punk ska bands before? Is that your favorite no. style of music? or? No. Yeah, I grew up actually in California, just in the glory days of ska music, and loved it, never wanted to play anything else. And so when I moved out to Utah, the biggest problem was trying to find like-minded people, and it, can't, it happened. I found Ashley and all the other guys, and it just worked. Very I was cool. in a rockabilly band yeah. for a while. In we the came neighborhood. On, yeah, we came on here a couple times and did like, but it was more of like a solely bluesy, and I kind of started taking it more punkabilly, and I think that's kind of what maybe ended it, where I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm a punk! I'm a punk, my ska! And I was in the, kind of a little bit into the Utah, like, hardcore scene, you know, just playing in people's basements, playing in people's sure. garages. The last band I was in was this really interesting prog metal trio, where, okay. where I was playing, guy. where I was playing a six-string bass and had no idea what the extra two strings on there were for, but definitely worked out. I'm really glad I got out. You got out it was, alive. It was a dark place in my life, but uh, this, uh, this whole ska punk thing has definitely been on the up and up for me. Well, and I have to say that it, I think it's one of the hallmarks of, of punk ska music that it's got such a, such a kind of a happy vibe, which is exactly. in a way kind of ironic to say, but it's I true. I think it's needed right now. I think, I think there's a lot of, of negative going on right now, and I think really that if people just 
kind of put a little bit more of a positive spin on Lighten things. It, up. it just yeah. lightens it up, and I think so. That's our goal. Lighten that's our goal. <laughs> We're gonna. Our official slogan is just cheer up emo kid. Cheer up emo kid. Cheer up emo kid. Give him Give him 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 Amen. Amen. So where can folks find out more about Bombshell Academy on the interwebs? Of course, Facebook. Yes. Uh, BombshellAcademy.net. We always know. have. Dot net. Dot net. Very good. Uh, you can Google us. You can find us. You know, basically. City Weekly, like a bunch of listings like that, we try to stay pretty current and update stuff. Cool. Um, Halloween, we're gonna do the big Scalloween show with like two and a half white guys in the Anchorage and us all at Kilby Court. So that nice, show, nice Kilby Court. That's probably gonna sell you. out. I think that's probably already on its way to the sellout point. And then the grand opening of the Pickle Factory. They have a new inside venue, so that's another all ages venue here in Salt Lake. Um, so we're gonna do that on the 27th and kind of close out Halloween with that Halloween show. So it should be pretty good. And then we've got some stuff coming up in November and some like charity shows I think we're gonna do and some Christmas gigs and things like that and cool. private parties throughout the year. So well we'll get folks to go to bombshellacademy.net yeah. and Facebook. Facebook. And I promise Tyler, I'm gonna listen to Lil Wayne tonight <laughs> for you, man. I think that's a, I think that's the best shirt I've seen in a long time on this program. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick break because we need to talk to our sponsors and then we're gonna hear one more from Bombshell Academy. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. It's Mountain Views on Park City Television. Yeah,